Jewish people. Let's wrap it up with uh, uh, let's wrap it up with uh, the 60 year anniversary tomorrow, John F. Kennedy assassination. I've had a lot of different people on Roger on this topic. You've written a book on it, a New York Times best selling book, "The Man Who Killed Kennedy: The Case Against LBJ." I had a guy on uh, the podcast. Uh, I interviewed him six years ago. Jim Jenkins, Robert, you can pull this up. When I was interviewing Jim Jenkins, I asked him a question. Uh, he was one of the four people in the room that held um, John F. Kennedy's brain, okay, Jim mm. Jenkins. And we released this interview on it could have been the one of the anniversary dates. And a video was taken down for six hours. It was trending in a very good way. And then it was came back up the next day. And I said, who out of all the people, you know, who do you think was behind it? This is a guy that's been away for 50 years. He was in the military, was in the Navy, doesn't want any attention, doesn't do any interviews, doesn't talk to anybody. Somehow, someway, we got him to feel comfortable to come and talk to us. And I had him on the, on the show. And his wife was sitting right next to me. They've been married for 50-plus years. He says, the only per- the one man that makes me feel very uncomfortable is Lyndon Johnson, is who he said. Well, how did you come to the conclusion that Lyndon Johnson was behind the assassination of John F. Kennedy? Uh, basically, Richard Nixon told me that. Wow. He said that the Warren Commission was the biggest goddamn hoax in American history. Uh, and uh, I had uh, I'd always had my suspicions. But uh, the point here is that everybody who's analyzed the Kennedy assassination looks at it through a specific prism. So Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is right when he says the CIA is involved. Uh, Others are right when they say organized crime was involved. Yet others are right when they say the FBI was involved, the Secret Service, Big Texas Oil, uh, the international banks. But Lyndon Johnson is the linchpin. He is the nexus to all of those institutions and individuals. And he is the man who has the most acute interest. Lyndon Johnson is under federal investigation in the Bobby Baker scandal and the Billy Sal Estes scandal. Robert Kennedy's begun telling people he's going to be charged. John Kennedy tells Evelyn Lincoln, his personal secretary, on his way to Dallas on the plane, Johnson is being dropped from the ticket. Johnson's a man staring into the abyss. He knows he is going to prison. Uh, Drew Pearson, the most influential columnist of the day, already has a column uh, in the can for that Sunday, the day after Kennedy's supposed to be in Dallas, nailing Johnson for taking a bribe for a general dynamics uh, defense appropriation. So Johnson has motive, means, uh, and opportunity. He's the man who insists that Kennedy go to, to Dallas to bind up the wounds between the progressive and bourbon wings of the Democratic Party. He goes to Kennedy's hotel room the night before and tries to change the motorcade seating to put his hated enemy, Senator Ralph Yarbrough, in the death car with Kennedy and move his former uh, administrative assistant, Governor John Connolly, to the vice presidential car. Kennedy says, no, that defeats the whole purpose of why I'm here. I need to be seen with Connolly, the head of the more conservative wing of the party. Uh, And and in my book, I, I prove, using eyewitness evidence, fingerprint evidence, and deep Texas politics that... Johnson uh, and all these other entities, each of whom has their own motive, the CIA uh, about the uh, uh, the anger over the uh, uh, the Bay of Pigs failure, the anger over Kennedy's secret deal to uh, to remove our missiles from Turkey and Italy in the Cuban Missile Crisis, uh, big oil over the repeal of the tex- of the uh, oil depletion allowance. Uh, organized crime who feels double-crossed by JFK because they financed his election and they bended arms for him, broke arms for him in Chicago and in Texas in 1960, in which he wins a a razor-thin victory. So everybody has their own individual interest, the banks, because Kennedy is demanding a silver-backed dollar. They don't want to go there. But Johnson has a unique relationship with each one of them. And I actually prove that uh, among the fingerprints found on the cardboard boxes in the crow's nest uh, is the fingerprint for a man named Malcolm Mac Wallace, uh, who was Rob, who was convicted, Malcolm, Malcolm. who was convicted uh, in 1951 of murder. That's how we have his fingerprints. Wow. He murdered uh, a man named uh, uh, Douglas uh, Kinzer. Uh, who was in a love trial with Johnson's sister and who was trying to blackmail Lyndon Johnson. Uh, He was represented at trial by Johnson's personal attorney, John Kofer, uh, and he's the only man in the history of Texas to be convicted of murder and get a suspended sentence. 
whereupon he then goes to work at Temco, a defense contractor owned by D.H. Berg, one of the financiers of, of uh, Johnson's career, and the owner of the Texas School Book Depository Building. So uh, when I asked Nixon point blank after a couple cocktails, because <laughs> Nixon was very buttoned down, <laughs> it was very hard to get him to talk you know, retrospectively about anything. It was very forward-looking. Until 9.30. Until he had a couple of uh, silver bullets, as he would call them. Yes. He had a couple of martinis, and then he got loquacious. And I said, uh, I said to him, um, so, Mr. President, let me ask you a question. Who, who really killed John Kennedy? He kind of stared into his martini, and uh, he shuddered, and he said, uh, well, Dallas. I said, I I'm sorry, sir, I don't understand. He said, uh, let me put it to you another way. Lyndon and I both wanted to be president. The difference was... I wasn't willing to kill for it. Wow. But there it is. He laid it right out. And that was really my inspiration. It took me five years to write this book, but that was really my, my inspiration for writing the book. Uh, so when Robert Kennedy says the CIA did it, he's not wrong. Uh, you, you know, when Sam Jean Conda's daughter writes a terrific book, it says that the mob did it. She's not wrong. I mean, everybody has their own interest, but Johnson has a unique relationship with each. Tom, what do you add with this when you hear this? Because I know you put a lot of time into this, not at the levels of Roger. So I um, I landed where Roger landed because I, I, I look at, you know, the immediacy of impact. I look at and, you know, people say 24 hours. I don't think it was 24 hours. I think it was 84 hours. Lyndon Johnson was basically um, allowing the military industrial complex to do what they wanted, which was to get more federal money to replenish arms. And they were going to use up those arms in Vietnam. So it's literally, that's correct, right? It's like three and a half yes. days, yep. three and a half days. The national period of mourning is not over. And Lyndon Johnson has greenlit the uh, Vietnam War, number one. And number two, he's provided assurances to Alan Dulles of the CIA, who ended up on the Warren Commission. Who Kennedy had just fired. Who Kennedy had just fired because Kennedy gave the famous quote, the CIA needs to be torn in little pieces and scattered to the winds of history. Mm -hmm. I'm butchering the quote, but that was essentially a quote, correct? Smashed into a million pieces and scattered to the wind. Because they had, be because they had betrayed him. So the Bay of Pigs master plan included 29 Panamanian flag bombers flown, were supposed to be flown by Cuban pilots. Correct. Uh, this, so that's the air cover for the men storming the beach. Unbeknownst to JFK, uh, Charles Cable, the number two man in the CIA, whose brother Earl just happens to be the mayor of Dallas, uh, cancels that. So the, the men are now being chopped up on the beach, uh, and Curtis LeMay, the, the head of the Air Force, head of the Joint Chiefs, uh, goes to JFK and says, we have to send in the Air Force. Well, this is a provocation for war with the Russians. That's exactly what Kennedy agreed to the Bay of Pigs plan, only if it had plausible deniability. It was supposed to look like an indigenous Cuban invasion. And air cover so he, coming from a separate country, right? So he So he says, no, the CIA blames him for the failure. He blames them for the failure. So there, there is their motive. Also, and this is the most controversial thing, Kennedy has, uh, is being treated by Dr. Max Jacobson, Dr. Feelgood, uh, on an early version of methamphetamine, which he thinks he's taking a, a blend of enzymes and vitamins, and it makes him feel better. He's a, real, he's a genuine war hero, and he's incredible pain his entire life. He's wearing a back brace. He can barely walk. I think this book explains why he's so horny, why he is you know chasing all the time. Uh, and it also... Uh, he's on steroids constantly. He's on steroids yeah. This is who, by the way? Jeff. Pardon me? This is who you're John talking about? John Kennedy is on John steroids. Kennedy. Uh, yeah. If you look at the manifest to when Kennedy goes to Vienna for the summit with Khrushchev, Dr. Max Jacobson, uh, who, is, uh, who is doctor to the stars, he is, he is administering his concoction to Frank Sinatra, to Maria Calais, to uh, Aristotle Onassis, to Nelson Rockefeller, to uh, to Joe DiMaggio, to Marilyn Monroe. I mean, he, he is, uh, to Pablo Casals. I mean, this guy is, uh, is pushing drugs and everybody thinks they're taking an all natural formula that makes them feel better. Robert Kennedy learns about this. He gets this substance that Kennedy's injected. He sends it out to the FBI lab and they tell him what it is. And he goes back to his brother and he says, you can't. And by this time, John Kennedy has Jackie Kennedy taking it. 
Uh, and uh, Robert Kennedy says to his brother, "You, this is dangerous. You can't be doing this. And he said, I don't care if it's horse piss. It makes me feel better. Uh-huh. Wow. So, uh, so I think this is how they rash. This is how I think the intelligence agencies and those involved in the murder of Kennedy. This is how they rationalize it. Good God, the man's a drug addict. He's going to give away the store to Nikita Khrushchev. We can't trust him in Vienna. This is how they justify it. Two, two follow-up questions there for you. One of them is, first time around, Trump never released the Kennedy stuff, and second time around, you know, everybody's like, "How come you didn't do it?" You know, we wanted to have the information. It's like, well, you know, not yet. And it keeps getting delayed by both parties. Yes. What's the who the hell is the group that goes and sits with the president that claims before they get elected that we're going to tell the information of what happens that convinces them to say, listen, if there's one thing you cannot release is the fact that we killed Kennedy, because if you do, CIA is going to turn against you. What does that conversation sound like when they sit with a president? Well, uh, Trump has been very blunt about this. So. Uh, in 2017, I brought it to his attention that the that the Presidential Records Act, the Kennedy Assassination Records Act, meant that everything would be released uh, during the the first year of his presidency, unless he held any of it back. And he said, well, "What do you think I should do?" I said, "You should release it all. Why wouldn't you? It's been at that point 50 years." Uh, and uh, Mike Pompeo, the head of the CIA, convinced him uh, that releasing it all would expose our methods uh, and sources. Well, first of all, the sources part is ridiculous. There's nobody still alive who was involved in this national scandal. But secondarily, if they were involved in killing an American president, we we really need to know that. So in the end, Trump agrees to hold 20 percent back. I believe that 20 percent proves definitively what we learned in the last couple of days. Oswald uh, is not the shooter. But more importantly, Kennedy shot from the front and back. There are multiple shooters. Mm -hmm. Uh, Oswald is uh, well known to the CIA, well known to the FBI. They both deny that. Uh, And now it goes to Joe Biden. And Biden does the same thing. He releases more, but he still holds a little bit back. It's time for the American people to know the complete truth. If you think think about the end of the day, Pat, if, if they release that, Roger, and we find out that the CIA and the FBI together killed a president what had the cia and the fbi are just they're finished it, just, it, it certainly hurt, it certainly hurts their question about afuera. but for, afuera. But, but for, afuera. Uh, the warren commission so. never had the autopsy photos they were never granted access to the autopsy photos lee harvey oswald is tested for powder burns there are no there, the paraffin test comes back negative he hasn't shot a are you saying that right? lee harvey oswald I, did not pull the trigger did not I, most I, definitely I, did I, not pull the complete trigger. setup three complete minutes setup. on max seven Tom, I'll give you the final, and I got final question before we wrap up. Well, I was saying it all points to OBJ because you take a look at the things that OBJ did immediately thereafter, and they were counter to all the things that Kennedy was doing. And then there's there's been wiretaps and statements that came out of the mob where they all discussed why are we being stabbed in the back by Joe Kennedy using RFK to prosecute all the mobsters of America except the ones that are on his lineage, and they actually had considered offing RFK, and they said, don't do that, because Kennedy and Joe will flip this country upside down, and there'll be no trials, there'll just be murders. And they said, we can't go after Bobby. You have to go after the head of the snake. And the snake was Joe Kennedy. The head of the snake was JFK, because JFK's pen in the White House that gave authority to RFK, Attorney General, was allowing Joe Kennedy to conduct a retaliatory revenge campaign under the pen of his son, the Attorney General. So this is not conspiracy. This is what happened. And you had the mob saying it was happened. And so you look at everything there. That's why she says the mob did it. Yeah, she's right. They were interested. She's she's right. If you want to know more, gang, about... What uh, Roger's been talking about, Order the New York Times bestseller, The Man Who Killed Kennedy, The Case Against LBJ. The link will be below. And, and get the paperback because it has three extra chapters. Okay, get the paperback because it's got three extra chapters. And one of you won a signed copy.